Welcome to another Friday Sessions Quick Tip. Today we're going to be looking at multi-transports in disguise and then controlling them with Companion for Stream Deck. Let's jump in. So uh, I'm going to assume that you've managed to get um, Companion downloaded and installed. It's just a fairly sort of quick and easy process. Um, I'm going to start by adding um, adding a um, disguise instances to companion. So there's two different types, multi-transport control and OSC. I'm going to add one of each um, so I can show you the difference between the two. Um, this uh, D3 IP would be the IP address of your D3 machine. Because I'm running companion on the same machine as disguise, I can just set this as a loopback address. There we go. Um, and then, so that's the multi-transport control. I'm going to add um, a second instance, which will be the OSC control. Same again. In the production environment, that could be, uh, or that would be the IP address of your disguise server. Um, but right here, I'm running them both on the same machine, so just using a loopback address. So. Uh, there are our instances. Oh, this was just my um, test project. Let's go back through and um, set this up from scratch. So let's create a new project. Um, I'm just going to borrow some uh, media from this one. So right now, um, because we haven't got Disguise open, it's trying to connect to our multi-transport manager and not finding one. So that's why you're seeing this, this flashing error message up here. Let's open up this Disguise project. Here we go with our de default uh, disguise. We can uh, move our puck around and we just lose this projector. So, this tutorial comes from um, Matt, who's been watching some of the Friday sessions, who asked um, how to use multi transports to um, cut cameras while keeping the main transport um, clear to follow your timeline programming. So that's what I'm going to try and um, show you here. Um, so to do that, I'm going to create a couple of extra screens, which will be our iMag screens. Just make those um, perhaps half the size. Um, there we go. And then we'll do another one. Create another screen. And set that off to the right. There we go. So these will be our iMag screens where we'll um, put our cameras and then the main surface at the centre can be um, for our show content. In order to set up um, multi-transports we need to um, set up a multi-transport manager. So that's left clicking on um, transport at the top and then just going to name it. If we open this up, we'll see we've just got the default transport as if we were just using using this in single transport mode. Um, I'm going to add uh, a second transport which I'll call cameras, and that's where our cameras are going to live. The moment there's like um, there's a, a stacking order to this, so the top one will sit in front of the um, the one below it. Because we're using separate screens, it doesn't really matter. Um, which order these are because the content from this transport, uh, the default transport, will never get shown on the camera's transport and vice versa. But um, I just like these to sit, uh, the cameras to sit above the um, the content just in case we ever do want to, to make that switch. Um, at the moment, we only have one track, so both of them are looking at the same 
sort of default track one. If I go into cameras, we can create a new track. And then we don't want this transport to be able to do, use anything else apart from our camera track. So if we go in here and to set list, I'm going to set this. We create a new camera set list. And then make sure the only track that's in that set list is the camera track. So now if we try and try and change tracks, we're locked onto this camera track. Um, so let's, this is not going to be the same for our default. That's going to allow us to get onto our camera track, which is not what we want. So let's go in there, create a set list for this. And then we just want track one to be the only track that that um, can, can use. So, uh, oh, let's make that sticky so that we can't close that. If I show uh, track one can't, can't be changed on that one either. Um, let's throw a little bit of content onto our timeline. Something like this, maybe. Um, we want this to be sent to our content screen. And then, um, as the question was, how can we cut cameras? Let's set this up. I don't actually have any video inputs coming into this machine, but we can use um, placeholder images just to mark which camera input we've got. So let's let's drop Ada and George onto those. So now at least we get to see those placeholders when we're programming our cameras. If we switch back onto our cameras timeline, we can create the camera cues that we're going to switch in between. So um, let's just create a video layer for camera input one. So we can see, although I don't have an input, at least at least we have this placeholder. Um, I would like whenever I whenever I use a camera input. For that to uh, for that camera to be shown on both surfaces two and three, so let's make a mapping for that to work. Let's call that cameras. This will be a direct mapping, and in screens we'll say two and three. And then let's just tidy up the timeline a bit. Set that in its own section, and um, just give that a label. And we'll do the same again for camera input two. So down here, video in two. And we can use that same mapping we generated there. So that's all good. Just tidy up the timeline again. Alt S to create split. And I'll just put another note there. I'm going to enable global crossfade. I'll just uh, set that to maybe two seconds. Might be a little much, but have a look at that. So if we if we're, if we're cutting between cameras, it's probably a little bit slow. That so let's uh, reduce that down to one second. Let's just see that. Okay, perfect. So um, we need to um, give ourselves some queue numbers here. Um, so I'm going to, let's pull it out of the corner so we can see what we're looking at. Um, in here, where it says tag, I'm gonna change that to queue and then give that a, um, a queue number. And then we'll do the same for um, our camera Q2. Then uh, if we go back up to our multi-transport manager and create an event transport to go along with that. So you'll notice that there's a, a listening port number here. If we head back into our configuration for 
uh, multi-transport instance in uh, companion, that number needs to match um, here. So, so that should be good. They do. Um, let's start creating some buttons. This is a this is a button that I just have for uh, muting my mixer when I'm in here. So we'll we'll set up a, a clean page. Um, so if I create a new button, I'm going to say it's just a regular button that I want, um, and then we want this to be camera one. Perhaps if I make that like cam one it'll look a little bit better on the button. We can obviously um, sort of change the color, or you can add PNGs to to make this look a little bit nicer. Um, let's go to our key key down action. This will show all the available um, sort of functions that we've got. Um, so we're looking for the D3 MTC, and the one I'm going to be, use is go to queue. The uh, command is play section, so that relates to whether we are going to be using a, a sort of a, a play mode or play to end of section play mode. So because we want our playhead to stop at the end of the queue there, we're going to use a play section. Then we need to give uh, the player transport manager. So I believe that this is transport manager here. We need to call that cameras. And the track name is camera track. Transition time, we've just set that to one. I'm not sure if this overrides. And then the queue number is one. So now we have that um, set up. If I go back into disguise, I push that button on my stream deck, that will snap back to the start of that queue. So we can um, come back in and set up another button for our second camera queue. Um, again, regular button type, and then let's give that a name actually. Cam2, perhaps make that green color again. Oh, that's the text. So, D3 MTC go to queue, and we just cameras and camera track, action time one, and then we need to update our queue number to two. So, this should work. So now that is giving us a allowing us to cut those. So if we if we set our content to be go, uh, playing through on our default timeline, then we can we can change our camera cuts using our stream deck buttons. So that works pretty nicely. I said at the start I would show you how to um, use um, the um, D3 OSC instance as well. So let's just have a quick look at that. If we just create another button for. So if we go through on our key down action, there's a, a lot more available to you in terms of actions that you can do with D3 OSC. Um, we do need to do a little bit more setting up on the disguise side. So in order to be able to listen to OSC, we need an OSC device. If I um, go into our device manager, there's a default device um, that we can add, OSC1. And then our receive port needs to be the same as the instant send port. So let's just go check that. And that's 7401, so that's correct. This is going to be upset that um, it doesn't have an IP address here. One way to just make that happy is to give it a loopback address. Um, or obviously, if you were using a different machine or an iPad, um, it would be better to put that address in here, but um, for the moment that will just keep it happy. Um, 
So now if we go in onto our default track, we can create an event transport. And if I just give that uh, event transport OSC, we set our OSC device. And then here's a list of the um, the different messages that we can send that transport in order to control our uh, timeline. Um, the only thing that I'm going to change here for the moment oh, is the queue play mode. I want that to um, play to end of section. So let's um, set up, sort of clean up our main show timeline a little bit. That could be our first queue, and then we'll put in another video module with a, a second queue. We want this to go to our surface wall mapping. So there we go, we've got two queues. I'm just going to use Alt S again to um, create the splits in the timeline. And then we can um, give these some queue numbers. Just to keep things separate, um, I'm going to start this one at 10. And then make this one 11. So let's pop back to um, our companion. And D3SC, we can do uh, go to queue, queue number 11. Oh, it doesn't like the it doesn't like the three part notation for this. That's not a problem. We can just um, pop back into uh, disguise and make that a, just a standard of ten and eleven. Didn't realise that. So let's make this first one ten. We've now got a Q10, and then we can create um, another another button for Q11. D3SC, go to Q. So if we go back into um, back into our disguise session by pressing the buttons on the stream deck, I'm now cutting between our two queues on our main timeline and then I can still use the other buttons to control my um, camera timeline. The power of um, the D3OFC instance is there's there's many more things that we can do with that. So um, we can do things like change play mode. So if I just say set that to play, go down to D3OFC, we can do um, just set play mode to play, and then we can do another button, which is um, play. Oh. Doesn't doesn't make that doesn't make that look overly nice, does it? You can change the font size there, which will just sort of truncate that down to to fit in there. So uh, this we need to set this to play end of section. Um, obviously there's there's lots of other things you can do here so set master brightnesses and volumes, um, uh, change tracks, next section, previous section, um, there's quite quite a lot of things there but we'll just demo these two. So um, at the moment we're play to end of section as we can see there. If I set the play mode to play we'll move the modes and then we'll start ignoring section breaks. I can use my uh, stream deck to change between those two and then if I just wanted to push a, a queue number. Obviously because in my transport my queue play mode is set to play end of section which I think is safe because then I know I'm not going to play over into my second queue. Whenever I use the queue buttons that's going to override and set um, my play mode to play end of section whereas if 
I use the play mode buttons. So if I put myself into play, it's going to override again when I when I set back to Q10. So there we go. Um, those are the two different types of multi-transport control. Um, the last thing to say is the the OSC device um, only really addresses a single transport. So if we wanted to use um, OSC on multiple different transports, we would need to create multiple devices with different um, uh, port numbers, and then we'd have to have um, multiple different instances inside of um, Disguise in order to be able to um, address those. The power of that is all the different types of things that you can control with D3 OSC. Um, the multi transport control can control anything on any of the different transports, but you're limited um, just to the smaller number of functions that you can do with that. So we've got um, go to queue, um, go to time code, um, and then there's something called a track command, which I've I've not used. Oh, it's the um, play mode. So um, there you go. So um, two different ways of controlling your multi-transports um, from within Companion. Um, I think that's about as much as I'm going to show you today. So thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Thank you very much.